Hey there, Anna McKinlay here and welcome to my channel. Hey, I'm on a mission. My mission is to bring you 100 pieces of great content over 100 days. Content that, if you apply it in your life, will help you to elevate your life and your success across the board and to enjoy the ride more. <laughs> so if you like the sound of that, keep listening because today I want to talk to you about the secret source for success. Something that if we have it, makes us smarter, makes us more motivated, and yes, helps us be more successful. I'm going to talk about what it is and how you can get more of it. In fact, you're probably wondering right now, well, what is it? What is it? Tell us, Anna. Okay, I'll tell you. Happiness. You know, for many, many, many years, a lot of us have been taught and has believed that in order to be happy, in order to be able to have a happy and fulfilled life, we've got to be successful. We've got to be successful so we can have the stuff and then we'll be happy, right? Actually, research from over the past few um, decades has shown us that the opposite is actually true. When we are happy, we are more successful. When we have a positive mood and a positive mindset, we actually have the competitive edge um, in, in our minds, in our lives, in our businesses and our careers. The science clearly shows that happiness results in more of success and not the other way around, as so many of us have been taught and led to believe, right? And look, this is result related to research in other areas that tells us that optimists also have a number of advantages, that, that the person who's optimistic tends to be wealthier, more successful, healthier, and live longer lives than pessimists. <laughs> so I want to start right now with the, I, I can hear all of the people out there going, oh no, but I'm a pessimist, I'm not happy, does that mean I'm doomed? No, <laughs> not at all. It, there are things that we can do to shift where we're at on the scale, absolutely. Um, and look, uh, I know this from personal experience. If, I, if we were to wind the clock back by eight years, eight years ago, I was burned out, I was depressed, I felt I was broken, I was like living in an emotional black hole where I was just clinging on to sanity by my fingernails. Most of the people around me didn't realise it but I was in a really bad place emotionally and happiness was, you know, I could barely even spell it, let alone feel it. I was in such a bad place that I'd just be walking down the street, nothing happening, and I'd just burst into tears for no reason. It was crazy. I tried counselling, even that didn't really help because, of course, that's quite a long, drawn-out process. Um, but I was, I was about as, 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 as low as um, I could be without, you know, just completely giving up on life. And I rebuilt my happiness from there by applying the kinds of things that I'm going to share with you now. I'm going to give you a bit of a caveat. Of course, there's no magic pill that, that makes us um, go from a place like that to being happy overnight, but it's absolutely achievable with the right approaches and tools and um, with some time, right? Now, there are a number of dimensions to creating happiness in our life. There's so many things that we can do, but broadly speaking, dimensions include both how we think and also our physical well-being. And I'm going to focus um, first on the how we think piece of it. Um, now, Sean Acor, in his book, The Happiness Advantage, actually canvasses this really well. He's got a great TED talk as well on, I think, it's called The Happiness Advantage. But he sets out seven principles for practically bringing more happiness into your life. You know, he wrote a whole book about these seven principles. I'm not going to cover all of them here, but I will share with you some key points that you can actually start applying straight away, right? And the first one is that actually a lot of it boils down to our perspective. Changing your perspective changes your whole experience of life. And that's pretty important. We experience what we believe. And what we believe and focus on in our minds expands in our experience of reality. So what we believe really, really matters. Whatever happens in the world, you have the power to choose the perspective you take about it. 
that's a power that no one can take away from you. You actually do get to choose how you interpret events in your world, what other people do, things that happen, um, even things that we do. Right? Um, we get to interpret or choose how we think about it. And it's that choice of perspective. It's that choice of what we believe about the event that determines everything else in our lives, how we feel, our emotional response to things, how we speak, how we act, and therefore our results, right? So that's the first thing is, is start to be aware and be a bit more conscious about the perspectives we choose to take to things in life, right? That's number one. It has a huge, huge impact. The second one to be aware of is that what we repeatedly focus, we see more of. I alluded to that before. It's actually how our brains are wired. What we do repeatedly, we do repeatedly, and it becomes bigger and bigger in our lives. And the more we focus on a particular perspective or um, a particular viewpoint, a particular way of thinking, the more that becomes like our path of least resistance. So it becomes our default. And given enough time, it starts to become the lens through which we experience reality. And that can play both ways, right? Every moment through how you're choosing to think, you are training your brain to think in that way. Every single moment of your life. And that's really important because that actually changes and determines our whole experience of life. Those thoughts, um, if we think them enough, become beliefs. And belief, as I mentioned, becomes the lens through which we experience our world. It determines our life, right? So here's the thing. If we focus on scanning for negative things, on looking for risks, on looking for problems and things that might go wrong, we get really, really good at looking for and finding problems, negative things, things that might go wrong. And we actively train our brain to actually go out looking for that stuff. And we start to see the world as being filled with that kind of stuff. Problems, <laughs> things that could go wrong, risks, negative things, right? And you probably know people like this. It's, it's just like that they, they just get really, really good at getting on that negative train. It's a little bit related to that um, um, what we, what we focus on is, is what we get. You know, that um, scenario that if you decide to buy a new car, for example, a red car or a particular type of car, you might not see any of them on the road at all until the moment that you've bought it. As soon as you drive off that car lot, suddenly they're all over the place because our mind is focusing on it, so we see them. All right, it's related to that. We can also choose to focus on positives. We can actively train our brain to scan for and look for positive things. How do we do that? By consistently, consciously, and intentionally taking a positive perspective, looking for the positive in things, choosing the positive thinking. Right? Um, and if we do that, we're actually training ourselves to be more positive and to be happier. Want more happiness? in your life right now, start to get intentional and create a bit of discipline around focusing on things that make you feel happy. <laughs> right? And this applies to all time dimensions. Let me, let me unpack this a little bit. We can create more happiness in our lives by looking to our past, but just focusing solely on the good stuff, the happy memories, the things we enjoyed doing, the things we did well, our successes, the things that built our confidence, the good stuff. You know, what most people do in life is look to their past and just focus on the negatives and repeat, replay in their minds again and again the stuff that went wrong, that horrible experience, that thing that I did that was really embarrassing, etc., etc. Ignore all of that stuff. It really is irrelevant now unless you choose to give it relevance. You've got control over that. But you can choose to look to the past and focus on and relive the stuff that makes you feel good, the stuff that boosts your self-esteem, all of the things that you've accomplished. And yes, you've accomplished things, right? It's about getting good at looking for them. If you know how to walk, you learned to walk at some point. And that means that as a toddler, you had enough persistence to just keep on getting up every single time you fell down. If you can talk, 
you demonstrated similar persistence and learning the coordination around that. If you can hear and listen to my words, you showed persistence in learning that. These are just basic things, right? And I guarantee that if you look, you will find more and more stuff in your past, in your life, more little successes, wins, accomplishments that maybe you haven't noticed up until now. It's up to you. You can actually go on a hunting journey <laughs> and go out and find some of them. A really interesting exercise is take however long it takes and write out on a piece of paper 50 successes you've had in your life, big or small, doesn't matter. But actually look for and collect 50 things that have been successes in your life, even if it takes days. Because that's the kind of stuff that can help us build our self-esteem, help us focus on the positive, and help us feel happy about ourselves and about our lives. So that's dealing with the past dimension. What about the now? Well, here's the thing. What we repeatedly focus on, we see more of, right? I've talked to you about that just, just now. By focusing on negatives, we train our brain, brain to scan for negatives, or focusing on positives, we find more positives, right? Okay, so here's the thing, focusing on the present, we can train ourselves to consciously look for all the good things in our present moment, all the things that make us feel good, all of the things that have a little bit of beauty or a bit of hope or that are fun or that make us laugh or that we enjoy. And they doesn't matter if they're big or if they're small, doesn't matter if they're silly <laughs> or important, none of that really matters. It's simply about actually noticing them, appreciating them, feeling gratitude around them, choosing an interpretation of things that are happening in your life right now that puts a positive spin on it. You have that choice. Doing things that feel good for you or, or to you or that you just enjoy, finding things to laugh about. All of these things we can do in the present moment. And the more of these things that we do and that we do with some consciousness around it and that we acknowledge and kind of collect it creates a kind of momentum of more happiness in our life. So that's the present dimension. And then the third part of it is, well, what about the future? Looking to the future. Very, very easy in today's world to look at the future and feel hopeless and feel bleak and feel that the world is ending. But also we can look to the future and we can look for hope. We can look for positive trends. We can look for things that we can accomplish and influence. We can set goals for ourselves or for our families. There are things that we can look forward to. Again, it doesn't really matter too much whether these things are big or small. If you set a goal for yourself that you can actually feel a sense of accomplishment moving towards a goal that's meaning for you, it doesn't have to be world changing, not at all. It could be quite a small goal, but if it's something that's meaningful, if it's something that's fun, if it's something that would be rewarding or satisfying for you, it might be as simple as clearing out the closet, but it feels good. And it gives us that something to look forward to. It gives us that little sense of hope, right? That something to have a bit of excitement around. It might be as simple as booking in a night out with some friends <laughs> when we're able to go out, or even a stay in with some friends. <laughs> okay, um, that you can look forward to and engage with. So those are practical ways. And here's the thing, they work. These techniques all work. These are all things that we can do and engage with to actually create more happiness in life. And if we have more happiness, we are, as I said before, smarter, more motivated, and more successful. Why is this happy? Well, do you want a good life? Do you want to have success in your career? I you may be thinking about starting your own business and want to be successful in your own business. The happier you are, the better all of those things are going to go for you. Bottom line. All right, I'm going to leave you with just one more tried and true technique. If you're one of those people, and there's a few people feeling like this at the moment, that it's all a bit much and the world is a bleak place. Here's one robust, proven technique that you can start applying in your life right now. And it's simply at the end of each day, taking five minutes, just five minutes of your day, to ask yourself, what are three things that went well today? It doesn't even necessarily have to be something that you did. Just three things that went well today, big or small. 
ideally write those down in a journal or on a notepad or something like that. Three things that went well today. And then for each one, just answer the question for yourself. Why did it go well? Right. Could be, you know, a, a little thing could be a big thing. If you do that, even if you just do that for a week, you will find that your level of happiness and your level of positivity about the world will go up. All right, so have some fun with that. I hope this has served you. Um, and hey, look, if you enjoy this content, do make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any future episodes. And be sure to share this with anyone else you know who you feel would benefit. You know anyone in your social circle who could use more happiness? Share this episode with them, and I hope it serves them as well. Hey, thanks heaps for joining me today, and you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you in a future episode. Bye for now.